Right, case 20. I contrast to that last one, not quite as pedunculated. There is some like acanthos of the epidermis and very blue from here. Yeah. Um, and these areas over here are very tangential, which is why they look so weird with all those islands. So this area is a little bit better orientation. We'll try to get it to come into focus. So aside from being thick, what else is wrong with the epidermis? Like compared to, you know, kind of more normal over here. It's not really maturing. There's a lot of like right. blue cells throughout it. So kind of more full thickness. Yeah. Very it's, blue. Yeah, more yeah. Blue. Right. Good. So full thickness blue in the epidermis, especially in angiogenital sites, right away I think of H cell or elsewhere in the skin, subtle squamous cell carcinoma in situ. Uh, in the anogenital area, I don't call it squamous in situ. I call it high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, open print H cell. And then I add a comment because not everybody in the OB-GYN literature, people in the field of OB-GYN, people are familiar with that terminology because that's where it originated. I find that not everyone in the dermatology world, depending on when they trained, is, is familiar with that. So I usually had a comment that this is basically the, the current name for HPV-driven, high-risk HPV-driven, high-grade dysplasia or squamous cell carcinoma in situ of the anogenital area. And the, the difference of whether it's squamous cell situ or what would be called Bowen's disease in the past or Bowenoid papulosis is really clinical. And again, it's kind of controversial, I guess, in modern times. Not everyone agrees with the term Bowenoid papulosis. But I think there are uh, people in dermatology that still believe that's a separate entity and that basically it'll be younger people, they have HPV and they get multiple, often pigmented lesions and that can often be treated kind of conservatively um, is the, the thoughts of some people. I don't really have a good clinical um, experience with that disease, but but that's my understanding. So I basically put h cell and leave it up to the treating um, uh, the treating physician to decide if they think it's you know, squam in situ type solitary lesion or if they think it clinically fits for bonoid papulosis. This case was clinically felt to be bonoid papulosis, but I've seen the same pattern in other cases where it was not. I do think one important feature is that in the, particularly in anogenital um, HPV driven high grade dysplasia, h cell, I often see hyperpigmentation of the basal layer, increased melanin pigment to the point that sometimes these are biopsied thought to be seborrheic keratosis or even atypical melanocytic lesions clinically. So they can be very dark and I don't know why that is, but I feel like they oftentimes have increased pigment in the lesion. And this one's kind of subtle. It doesn't, you know, sometimes you can see really dramatic atypia. This is kind of a subtle atypia, but if you look around, you start seeing a lot of mitotic figures high up you can sometimes see good HPV viral change. Sometimes it's harder to appreciate. Um, can I get another area? There was an area up here that had like kind of more pleomorphic cells. Okay, maybe not. It was kind of multinucleated atypical cells up here in this area. But I think that the thing I think of is if I see a thick lesion that's blue, sometimes even if I see a separate keratosis that looks dark blue or purple, I'll go closer because I'm always worried that it could be a subtle squamous cell carcinoma in situ or in the anogenital area, H cell. Oh, come on. The one area I want is going to be the last pixel to come into focus. You got to be kidding me. All right, there it is. A little more atypia, but kind of subtle, but uh, this is H cell, or in this case, bonoid papulosis. 